Yo, what's up? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Thursday, May 27, 2021. I'm one of your hosts, Blessing Adioye Jr. Joining me is Tim Ma Fucking Gettys. Gotta go fast, Bless. Gotta go fast. Tim, we've this is our third episode of KFGD. KFGD today, or not today, this week. Yeah. Feeling we've been the working vibe, together man. a lot lately. Yo, this is the best way to intro E3 is with a little Tim and Bless. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? This cause E3 is starting. Now, I feel like today oh, yeah. really is the kickoff. We got the Sonic stream. We got the Horizon Forbidden West stream. We got Dying Light. Dark Pictures are doing some shit. It's crazy. Yeah, I saw the Dark I was like, Dark Pictures, now is not the time. We got big shit happening. You got to wait till Saturday, man. Like, there's <laughs> way too much video game news to talk about. So let's talk about it, uh, Tim, because today's stories include Switch Pro coming this year. Question mark, question mark. Microsoft's E3 announced and oh. Sonic the motherfucking Hedgehog, because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. You should have at 10 a.m. live right here on Twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. We run you through the nerdy news you need to know about. If you're watching live, you can correct us when we get stuff wrong by going to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. If you don't want to watch live, you can watch later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames, roosteeth.com, or you can listen later on podcast services around the globe by searching True. for Kind of Funny All Games of Daily. To be a part of the show, at to patreon.com slash games or bronze members or above get to write in, and silver members or above get the show ad-free with the exclusive daily post-show housekeeping for you. There's so much happening today. Uh, we just got done reacting to the Sonic Central stream where they did a bunch of Sonic the Hedgehog announcements. Uh, me and Tim's reactions will be going up on YouTube for you to check out if you missed the live recording or if you just want to watch it again because it's a really fun time. We're going to talk a little bit about what happened at Sonic Central later in the show. But let me tell you, it's one you want to check out specifically for a bling announcement, an unexpected bling announcement that blew me and Tim away. Mm hmm. So go check that out. Uh, right after this episode of KFGD Live, we're reacting to the new Cobra Kai trailer. When I, when yeah, I say we, are, we dude. when I say we, I mean Tim, Nick, I assume Andy. Mm -hmm. Like who's mm -hmm. all on that, Tim? What's going and on? Kevin. With that? And Kevin, we got to do it. Cobra Kai season four teaser trailer. I haven't seen it yet, but the headline, Kevin, is Terry Silver returns. I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. I know that they hinted at it last time. But I'm so excited. Yeah. Plus, we got to get you on Cobra Kai, man. You are, if you like High School Musical, the musical, the series, you're going to oh, yeah, fucking dude. love Cobra Kai. Okay, I got to get on it. I've been like, I've been hearing you guys talk about it over the course of the last year or so. And every time I hear you guys talk about it, you guys talk about it with such a passion and fervor that I'm like, fuck, man, I might just need to watch all of it. I, I might just need to, to have, take a weekend and just go through mm -hmm. all the Karate Kid and Cobra Kai stuff. Because let me mm -hmm. tell you, Season I know it's going to disappoint finale. a lot of people. The Karate Kid content I've seen is the Jaden Smith movie. <laughs> That's fine. I've seen That's the Jaden Smith movie, and I think I've seen Karate Kid like on TV, but like not, not actually sit down and watch through it. I went in fresh. I went in and watched them all for the first time leading into to the seasons last year. Holy crap. Mm -hmm. Anyways, enough about that. There's too much video games to talk about. Yeah, there is way too much stuff to talk about. Like uh, at 12 noon, how there's a Dying Light 2 stream that we're also reacting to live. Uh, and so tune in at 12 p.m. Uh, Pacific time uh, right here. Twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games for that. And then at 2 p.m. Pacific time, of course, we're reacting live to the Horizon Forbidden West state of play. That's right. And that's all going down right here again on Twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. But the reactions don't stop there because tomorrow there's a Far Cry 6 presentation going down at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time. And we're reacting to that as well. And so tune in for all of it. It is a banging week right here for uh, kind of funny games and of course it's all leading into e3 it's e3 time e3 season has officially started e3. Uh, Tim, are you hype oh could not be more hype baby especially with these nintendo rumors let's get into it oh let's get into it uh a few more things for housekeeping tonight 5 30 p.m pacific time greg's hosting another episode of presence of mind for cloud nine with alana and khalif uh this is their every other week show about uh mental health uh, and they'll be streaming or will be streaming it right here on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. Thank you to our Patreon producers, Blackjack and Tom Bach. Today we're brought to you by Purple Mattress, but I'll tell you about that later for now. Let's begin with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. It's time for some news. We have seven stories today. The Baker's does it. And they're all fairly big stories. It's where we get a news day this heavy. And so let's jump right into it, starting with number one. Nintendo plans an upgraded Switch replacement as soon as September. This is being reported by Bloomberg, which 
you know Bloomberg for all the scoops. Scoops. Bloomberg is the one that are reporting the ones that are reporting on the big video game uh, uh, news that they get the scoops. Jason Schreier is out there doing work. This time though, uh, uh, this scoop is com- coming from Takashi Mochizuki and Debbie Wu over there. Nintendo plans to begin assembly of its new Switch as soon as July and release the upgraded replacement for its four-year-old game console in September or October, people familiar with the matter have said. The new console, likely to be priced higher than the $299 original, may be announced ahead of E3 uh, starting June 12th to allow publishers to showcase the range of Switch games at the global event, the people said, uh, asking not to be named because the plans are not public yet. It'll be sold alongside the 199 Switch Lite, with the standard Switch phased out over time. Assemblers will start shipping the new model, uh, whose commercial name is, is known only to a handful of people within the Kyoto-based company, as early as July, and production is planned to ramp up to a peak in the October to December quarter. This is despite widespread semiconductor shortages, which we've talked about on the show plenty of times, that have affected the supply of everything from automobiles to TVs, headphones, and game consoles, including the Switch itself. A Nintendo spokesman declined to comment. Suppliers are confident they can fulfill Nintendo's orders despite the ongoing chip shortages. Its production lines are better prepared for the potential component shakeup and the parts Nintendo uh, is using. Yeah, the parts Nintendo is using are subject to less competition than those in its rivals' more powerful consoles. Tim, where are you at with this update regarding the Switch Pro? This is 10 out of 10 news to me, man. Like, I'm hoping this is true. A couple of things to keep in mind here. Uh, Jeff Grubb tweeted out, like, okay, there was a couple. I should take a step back here. Mm. Uh, there's been a lot of rumors based on this report of industry insiders kind of giving their thoughts on it all. And like, yesterday I was talking about Emily Rogers and how I trust her. And she, somebody said something about like, oh, so before E3, does that mean that we're going to get something like today or tomorrow? And she like responded with like a sh- emoji, which is like implying, yes, that's what we're getting. A lot of people are kind of uh, implying that they have that information that it's going to be today uh, as of tomorrow would have been yesterday right so today they're going to announce it jeff grubb tweeted out uh something that's really key which is right now it is 2 a.m in japan so if an announcement were to come it's probably not going to happen for the next like six or seven or eight hours so i imagine if we're going to get this today it's going to be at around 6 p.m pacific yeah what, so I want to bring in uh, a previous report from Bloomberg where they contextualize what we can look forward to out of a Switch Pro. Uh, they wrote here, right, uh, Nintendo's, Nintendo has to compete for gamers' attention with a new console generation introduced by rivals Sony and Microsoft in November. Their PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X machines beef up the visual fidelity, speed, and performance of their predecessors, and both have been in extremely limited supply since launch. The Switchmaker's response will be to upgrade its flagship console with a 7-inch Samsung display, uh, uh, OLED, or OLED display, and faster NVIDIA uh, Corp gra- graphics silicon, uh, making it capable of 4K output when docked to a TV. For you, like, wh- what does this look like for you in terms of the game's lineup and uh, how it's going to improve the games? Because, you know, like, they, they mentioned in the article uh, that they're going to want to get this info out ahead of E3 so that at E3 developers are okay to announce their games and they can really go ham in terms of, Hey, this is what you, what you, what you can look forward to. Hey, this is what it can do. Um, with that, like what is your expectation levels in terms of the type of announcements we're going to get at E3 and the, like how they're going to take advantage of the theoretical switch pro. A really good question because honestly, I'm a little bit shocked that that would be the case. Because I know we've been talking about the Switch Pro for years at this point, or whatever the next Switch iteration is going to be, and how backwards compatible, but more importantly, how forwards uh, exclusive it's going to be. Like, are there going to be a lot of games, any games that are tied only to that system? We've seen it before with Nintendo, with uh, the 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 3DS and new 3DS, right? And then we also saw it with the the Game Boy to Game Boy Color, where there were Game Boy Color exclusive games that would not work on Game Boy. There were very few of them. If I remember correctly, there was probably like less than 20 total. Uh, Whereas a lot of games like um, uh, were just enhanced, like Pokemon Gold and Silver would have color sprites and stuff if you play it on a Game Boy Color, even though it was a Game Boy game. So I wonder what that's going to look like in more modern times. Uh, but regardless, I'm very excited for this. I think that just the enhancements across the board are going to be very appreciated, help with the frame rate for older games, things like that. Um, and also just having OLED, always a good thing in my book. Uh, but mm-hmm. it's interesting 
in terms of E3 and the announcements and them needing to announce before it so other companies can kind of speak on their products. I wonder how in tune everyone is with this information because it sounds like Bloomberg is getting this info and not everyone even at Nintendo knows what this thing is called, what it's going to be, all that shit. If they don't know that, do devs know that already? Is this already in the the plans on, on for third party games? Like this announcement having to come before E three, why? Because that's not for Nintendo's games, right? They could add E three mm-hmm. announce. Here's this thing, and here are the games. So this is implying that it's going to be affecting some of the third party announcements we're going to see. We just saw the Sonic announcement here, uh, and granted, that didn't have any major new game releases and that we would have to know. The systems they're on we got a new sonic game tease for 2022 but that could be on the switch pro could not be on the switch pro it doesn't matter at this point because they didn't announce any consoles so what does that mean for square enix presents what's that mean for you know whatever else you be soft forward like uh, there was somebody yeah, somebody yeah. in chat asked like yeah why would you do this now if you have probably nintendo nintendo direct coming up and i think the reason for that is e3 season and summer of uh, summer games fest season last uh, uh, like multiple days, right? It's across a week. It's across a month. And when you're Nintendo, historically during E3, Nintendo has gone later. Um, uh, when you're t- when, in regards to the the big presentations, like if you have Microsoft going Sunday and PlayStation historically going Monday and Nintendo historically going Tuesday, you don't want to make it so that a few days before Ubisoft has to hold back in terms of what they can talk about or how they talk about those things. I think coming out uh, soon and going, Hey, the switch, the switch pro or whatever it's called, the new Nintendo switch is real. And this is what you can look forward to out of it. These are the specs. You're going to be able to play games 4k on your TV. If you come out right now and say that, that means that at a Ubisoft forward, maybe you can get a, Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle 2, or you could get a uh, Starlink Battle for Atlas 2 featuring Star Fox again, or whatever the third party. And like, I'm focused on Ubisoft because that's the easy thing to say because Ubisoft has their Ubisoft 4 that they've already announced. There are plenty of things that, that are, there are plenty of events that are happening at E3 that are probably still under wraps that are probably still going to fill in that would probably come before Nintendo Direct that you want to be able to talk about freely. Um, and maybe that is that doesn't even come in the form of this is what the Switch Pro can do, but for Nintendo, if the Switch Pro is really coming out this fall, then jumping up, jumping ahead of it and having those announcements come through and having us all contextualize it of, oh, okay, Ubisoft is putting out a new game on the Switch. Oh, shit, the Switch Pro is this fall. That's going to be big for the Switch Pro. Like, yeah. we're all thinking about it in that context now. That's interesting, you know, and I think that is probably it more than anything, because I don't imagine them at the Ubisoft conference being like, and it's, you know, Mario plus Rabbids 2 taking full advantage of the new Switch Pro, and here's how it's doing that, 4K, blah, 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 blah. I can imagine just it being a, a feeling for all of us watching, being excited, knowing that this thing is coming of like, oh, an Assassin's Creed game's coming to, to, to Switch. It's probably going to actually work this time on the Switch Pro, unlike the other console, the original Switch, right? So, yeah, it is definitely more of like kind of setting the tone going forward where hopefully instead of us being pessimistic about it uh, from the get-go, we're more like, oh, hey, okay, Mm. this actually might work out. Yeah, and to clarify, like uh, an earlier comment too, like somebody in chat, the chat mentioned, right? I don't think they're going to market things as coming out on Switch Pro. They'll just say it's Switch. When I say like taking advantage of the Switch Pro, I'm talking about how for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation, PlayStation 4 Pro, you got trailers that were, oh yes, like, and this is going to work this well on the PlayStation 4 Pro. Like that was mm-hmm. that was the push, and I think that will be the push during E3. Not necessarily saying that, oh yeah, these games are going to be Switch Pro exclusive, or not saying that they're going to say Switch Pro in every single sentence, but that will be a highlight. That will be a marker. Oh, and you can play these games 4K on your TV. That's oh. going to be it's going to be so ad- it's going to be an additive thing. And also, yeah, I'm also very excited. A thing that we that we need to talk about that's very exciting is the uh, like this fall release. You know, like, one, how confident are you that they're actually going to hit that and that's going to be the case? And then also, like, what does that do for the game slate this fall? Do we see Breath of the Wild this year? Breath of the Wild Here's 2. the thing. Uh, how confident I am really depends on if they're actually announcing this before E3. If, it's, if they really announce this before E3, I think 100% it's happening. I think it's going to be hard as shit to get. But I remember back to last year how all of us were like, are the next-gen consoles really going to hit it, or are they going to get delayed? They didn't fucking get delayed. They came out. This thing's going to come out. Nintendo wants to get these in as many hands as possible. It's going to be a slower roll than they would like or that any of us would like. But if they have the means to have any out, 
go for it because that allows the pipeline for developers to at least start making those games and start normalizing it earlier or else we're just holding everything back multiple years and nintendo's just not in a place to do that right now they need to start moving forward they, they can cruise as much as they want and they have the ability to do that they don't want to do that they want to dominate the market like they have been the last couple of years and continuing that momentum so i imagine that this is going to be announced i do imagine we're going to get it if not today, in the coming days. And I think that they're going to hit the the September, October launch for sure. Mm -hmm. What games come come out with it? That's a big question. I, I, here's the thing. We're, I keep going back and forth on what this is going to look like. And I know a lot of the rumors and, and conversation has been like, okay, what games are coming with this new iteration mm -hmm. of the Switch Like as it's a, a launch line of new games? I almost feel like the majority of me thinks that's not the case where it's just going to be business as usual for nintendo of like they'll have business as usual for older nintendo switch like the last couple of years uh not the last two years but before that where it's like there's a steady cadence of games coming out either month to month or every other month um that, that tells a nice story but i don't think it's going to be like here's the launch titles for the the switch pro or switch plus or super course, switch yeah. whatever in september october i think it's going to be like this comes out in september october maybe alongside a bigger game and then it's like cool and we're getting a 2d metroid and we're getting a this and we're getting a that a mario kart 9 whatever yeah see my thing is i don't think it looks like a console launch lineup but i do think it looks like a banger fall i think you do i think if i'm nintendo and of course so much of this comes down to timelines and what is ready and what isn't ready. But I am putting out Breath of the Wild 2 day and date with a an improved Switch. I'm I'm finding a way to do that. I am I think this makes Pokemon Legends Arceus that we talked about yesterday make more sense with its release date. If the Switch Pro comes out in the fall and that comes out in January, I think that makes a lot of sense in terms of momentum in a game that's going to be that big and that important uh, to come out right after that. I think that makes sense. I think a TD Metroid would potentially make sense. I think you you want to have one two or three big titles and right now for the fall those those titles could be breath of the wild 2 pokemon brilliant diamond and uh maybe one more thing which could be a metroid or a donkey kong yeah and i mean honestly i don't think that this is the most exciting thing for us necessarily but i do think that they also have the room if they have the switch pro or whatever to put something out like a super super smash brothers ultimate ultimate edition where it's like all right cool fighter pass yeah. 2 is done here's all the characters on the cart the pro uh, edition. maybe a couple added things i don't i don't really know just to like really fine tune it all some higher res i don't know just optimized more than just what the other game would be shitty shady whatever i'd buy it yeah hear me out uh the new super smash brothers ultimate there we go. That Alongside is such a Nintendo the new name. Nintendo Switch. <laughs> because we know Nintendo is great at naming things. Tim, I want to keep this uh, this this hype conversation going, the E3 Choo -choo. speculation going. Story number two, Xbox and Bethesda Games E3 showcase is coming on June 13th. This is Michael McWhirter at Polygon. Microsoft will hold its E3 2021 or yeah 2021 game showcase on Sunday, June 13th at 10 a.m. Pacific time. The company announced Wednesday. The event, which Microsoft is calling the Xbox and Bethesda Game Showcase, will be streamed live on Xbox's Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook channels. In an announcement on Microsoft's Xbox Wire, General Manager of Xbox Games Marketing Aaron Greenberg said the Xbox and Bethesda Game Showcase will focus on games from Xbox Game Studios, Bethesda, and many many game creators from our or yet many game creators from our partners around the world. End quote. Greenberg fur further teased that viewers will learn, quote, everything you want to know about the epic gaming lineup coming out of this partnership, the incredible games coming to Xbox this holiday, upcoming releases on Xbox Game Pass, and more, end quote. Uh, a thing I want to bring up uh, is a tweet from the homie John Cartwright, uh, who tweeted out, this is great, LOL, with screenshots of both Summer Games Fest and uh, E3, their Twitter accounts, kind of claiming the Xbox Game Showcase. When you look at Summer Games Fest, right? They Summer Games Fest tweeted out, it's official, the Xbox and Bethesda Game Showcase streams live on Sunday, June 13th. Hashtag Summer Game Fest. And then you look at the E3 channel and they are like, yeah, start your start your planning for E3 2021. And, and it is with the Xbox uh, Game Showcase. And like, I don't think Xbox themselves have necessarily claimed one or the other or both. You know, like they're, they've not really like picked a side, but I think uh, uh, internally we're all like, oh yeah, E3. This is an E3 presentation, but it's just like Xbox's presentation that everybody's kind of attaching themselves to, which is fun. 
It doesn't fucking matter, man. It's all just nonsense it doesn't. anyways. It doesn't, We're going to be I, here I, on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games, Twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games, reacting to whatever it is, wherever just, it is. I just find it fantastic it. that Jeff Keighley is like, hey, man, this is a Summer Games Fest showcase. I love and, it, like, there's Good for with him. It. Good for him. I love it so much. Yeah, it's 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 fantastic. Now, uh, a couple things I want to say is I just love the the level that Twitter's at right now. I forgot to mention this during the Nintendo conversation, but it's just like you gotta love that the day that we're getting Horizon Two or Horizon Forbidden West stuff. <laughs> there's mm. Nintendo Switch Pro rumors that are tied to Breath of the Wild Two. It's like is Breath of the Wild Two going to <laughs> do the there's same thing to Horizon Two that <laughs> Breath of the Wild I mean, the One did to the, Horizon? <laughs> the fucked up thing is with the Horizon Forbidden West presentation happening today. That has strengthened my confidence in oh that can be a that can be a fall game. That game yeah, might totally. uh, very well come out this fall. Then we get the news of <laughs> Switch Pro possibly come out this fall, which makes you think Breath of the Wild Two is going to come out this fall. Possibly these come games, this fall. These games can come out at the same time again, Tim. It is yeah. very possible, and that is yeah. hilarious and kind of fucked up. Yeah. So uh, back to the Microsoft stuff here. I'm excited about this, man. I, I think we've been talking a lot about the branding and how are they actually going to do this? Is it going to be Microsoft leading into Bethesda or two separate events or blah, 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 all the shit. I like that they're like Microsoft or Xbox and Bethesda showcase. And we know it's 90 minutes. They're focusing on games. Wow, man. We can expect a banger out of this. Like everything is teed up for just awesomeness at this point. Yeah, and this answers the big question for me in terms of how does Xbox treat Bethesda? Is it going to be Xbox, Bethesda, or Beth are they going to treat the studios as, cool, but that's just a part of the family now, cool. Like, we're treating machine games the same way we treat Playground, the same way we treat Bethesda Game Studios. The fact that they're calling it Xbox and Bethesda Game Showcase, I think is very fascinating, and I wonder if they're doing that mainly because they're going to talk about Ghostwire Tokyo and Deathloop, or if it is a thing where they're like, no, we see value in the Bethesda name, and we can use that as an opportunity to brand these studios as Bethesda because... Uh, people know what a Bethesda game looks like. People like Bethesda as a publisher. People, the the brand awareness is is there. And when you when you when we say machine games, uh, or Bethesda publish publish, um, Bethesda published machine games, Wolfenstein Three is coming to Xbox exclusive. That means something even more. Um, I wonder if that's what it is, but I think that's fascinating either way. Yeah, I'm so excited for this. I, I think that honestly, when you really look at E3 itself, like every year. There's the going into it, like, what are the big conferences? Like, what are the ones that we're really, really expecting something special from? And this year, it's Nintendo and it's Xbox, right? Mm -hmm. Like, Nintendo, just because they've been quiet for, for a while in terms of major announcements, and there's so much swirling about what could happen, and with all the rumors of the Pro and et cetera, et cetera. But then on the Microsoft side, it's a little bit different. Like, it's not so much... Uh, the, they've been quiet, so it's the question of what could. It's They've been pretty loud, so there's the understanding of what will be. Like, we know what's going to be there, and that's exciting. So that's what's really cool, is that we we know that we're about to get 90 minutes of answers, right? The questions have already been asked. So they're teed up to kind of knock it out of the park in a lot of ways, really kind of continue. They don't need to build the foundation anymore of Game Pass. Like That's been done. They've done that work over the last couple of years. This is now just being like, Let's go. It doesn't yep. matter where you're playing, whether it's PC, whether it's xCloud, whether it's on a Series S, Series X. We want you. Looking forward to it, Tim. Uh, we've talked about Nintendo. We've talked about Microsoft. What's, what's missing here? What have we not talked about? Oh, that's right, Tim. PlayStation. Story number three. There's loads of new interesting info regarding Sony's PlayStation. Uh, yesterday, they, they published their investor relations document. And let me tell you. I had a blast of a time looking through that shit. It's a lot of nerdy video game marketing shit, which I'm a big fan of. Um, I'm going to pull from Wesley Yinpool at Eurogamer, who helps us break it down. There's a lot more to Sony's PlayStation Investors Relations document than confirmation Uncharted 4 is coming to PC. And that's what we should start with. Uncharted 4 mm -hmm. seemingly is coming to PC. That's the thing that came out of that document. To continue... The document published as part of Sony's 2021 Investors Relations Day focuses on the company's game and network services segment. It's penned by PlayStation boss Jim Ryan and includes a number of interesting bits of information that reveal Sony's master plan for its money printing video games business. At the beginning, Sony mentions it's, quote, building our biggest ever platform with PlayStation 5 and that it's working to ensure our longest ever tail with the PS4. 
PS5 has delivered PlayStation's highest ever launch sales with 7.8 million units sold as of the end of Sony's last financial year, ending March 2021. For context, PS4 sold 7.6 million in the same time frame, PS3 sold 3.6 million, PS2 sold 1.4 million, and PS1 sold 700,000. PS4 has 45% uh, console market share, according to Sony. With PS5, it's targeting over 50%. To this day, Sony points to favorable demographics that should ensure PS5 is a massive success. It reveals growing interest in PlayStation gaming among women, with the proportion of women among console ownership increasing from 18% with PS1 to 41% with PS4 and PS5. Here's an interesting one. Uh, we know Sony is currently selling PS5 at a loss. According to this document, Sony expects the PS5 Standard Edition to break even from June and make a profit soon after. As you'd expect, the real money is not made from the sale of consoles. Rather, it's from software, services, and peripherals. During the 2020, 2020 financial year, consoles made up 20% of revenue with software, uh, services, and peripherals making up 80%. During the 2013 financial year, consoles made up 48%, leaving 52% for software, services, and peripherals. Despite the focus on PS5, Sony says PS4 remains the key driver of PlayStation Store revenue, with strong new releases including Horizon Forbidden West. During the 2020 financial year, 95% of PlayStation Store revenue came from PS4. Let me say that again because that, that is a large number. 95% of PlayStation Store revenue came from PS4. Sony reckons for the 2021 financial year, that'll drop down to 70%. Uh, so here's some more figures. Uh, Sony has has 48 million paying PS Plus subscribers, with online multiplayer being the most popular reason uh, for signing up. Free games isn't too far behind. They also talked about new growth vectors, uh, talking about doubling down on China as a, as a possible growth vector. PlayStation Direct being its direct hardware distribution channel, uh, which sidesteps retailers, uh, which have also struggled with scalpers and bots since the new console came out. And then uh, lastly, for, for growth vectors, they talked about cloud uh, being a, another huge one. Uh, we learned that PlayStation now has 3.2 million paid subscribers. Tim, there was a lot there. Does any of this stick out to you in particular? This is an insane news day, man. I can't believe we're talking about all this in, in one day. But yeah, so much, so much stands out to me here. The the women uh, playing games, the demographics there, fantastic stuff. And I think that backs up what we've all kind of been seeing and talking about for for many years. It's cool that Sony's presenting it that way. I don't know if you saw the the art that they had, but it was really cool. A lot yes. of PlayStation female characters all hanging out together. Um, the sales numbers, yep, in line with everything that we've known so far. But it is really just crazy to think about how uh just kind of mainstream playstation and video games have become and how the hardware for ps5 is outpacing every other playstation console despite all of the issues that we've had imagine if we didn't have those issues holding everything back right the supply and demand issues uh, but the biggest news to me uncharted pc mm -hmm. never thought i'd see the day you know like I, I feel like two years ago even if you were to be like oh we're gonna see some uh playstation games coming to pc it'd be like I don't, I don't believe you. And then it was like, oh, Death Stranding. It's like, okay, well, that's bizarre, and I would have never believed it. But there's a couple things you can say of, well, they're not technically a first party, not this, not this, not this, so it's okay. But then it was like, oh, Horizon is coming to PC? Days gone? Like, whoa, this is nuts. Never thought I'd see Naughty Dog games. Never thought I would see Uncharted 4, which if they're doing Uncharted 4, are they going to do Nathan Drake collection at some point? If they already ported it from mm -hmm. PS3 to the PS4 architecture, you know, is it worth the extra work to to port it over to PC? These numbers tell me absolutely. You know, they've already got the sales on the PlayStation side of things. Introduce it to PC games. And we're going to continue to see the Xbox first party titles and PlayStation first party titles dominate the Steam charts every time they're released because there's a hunger there because they're quality ass games. 100%. And yeah, I I I enjoyed looking through this uh, a lot when it comes to when it came to the the numbers and the statistics that they're that they're busting out to go back to the growing demographic in, in women gamers thing. I, I I love that also because not only is it a a cool number to throw out there, but also you can see that they're trying to act on it in, in some ways in terms of how they create games. You look at the the graphic that they put up with uh, uh, all the characters, and it is Aloy. It is ellie from the last of us it is the character from gravity <laughs> gravity rush um uh, and it's cool it's cool to see like the shift of like in 2013 
there being conversations about like oh you can't have like ellie on the main cover of the last of us that's not going to sell to now El- now the new last of us game having two uh main women protagonists right like that's a really dope thing and it's dope to see uh games feeling like they are being made for a larger uh, uh growing audience um another thing i want to point out is them talking about uh why they believe in the playstation 5 and them talking about the confidence that they've had in the launch lineup there's a graphic here and kevin i don't know if you can find it it's on the the page that a link that you're you're showing er, showing earlier but they basically compared the the playstation 4 lineup to the ps5 launch lineup uh and they show like kill zone shadow fall knack rezo gun uh uh and a few of their like previous ported games from the ps3 being like the standouts for the ps3 launch lineup and when you compare that to ps5 it is ridiculous right like you're getting spider-man miles morales demon souls sackboy a big adventure and alongside those they have the metacritics <laughs> and it's I, it's funny too that they put the um they 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 uh put the the metacritic next to knack right being the 54 metacritic the fact that they're willing to say that out loud of like hey you know the ps4 launch lineup wasn't incredible right it was very serviceable but it wasn't amazing and when you take that compare that to demon souls having a 92 on metacritic spider-man miles morales having an 85 sackboy having a 79 and you look at their um the following games with returnal their confidence in ratchet and clank mlb the show uh and the whole slate of first party titles that they have upcoming final along with third party, final fantasy 16 you know like there is an amount of confidence that they have there along with them talking about ps4 key titles i love how their strategy has shifted going into this generation regarding that and they also put in forespoken here which i love um Along with that, there was also a there was also uh, um, uh, a bit of like craziness going on on the timeline last night because in this graphic they had God of War Ragnarok and they've changed out in the current one you don't see the Ragnarok logo but they did post the God of War Ragnarok logo that was a fan made thing and that caused uh, a, a little bit of a Twitter storm with even Corey Barlog tweeting just an out of context like like god damn it kind of gif of like him like uh face palming um because the the game's name hasn't been confirmed yet as god of war ragnarok and that's led to speculation that oh yeah that's gonna be the final name which isn't surprising but also interesting it would be interesting to get the confirmation like this um but can you bring that picture back up for a sec uh, a really interesting point, I think, is like looking at, you know, the PS5 and the value that it has. Obviously, we've been talking about a lot like it is with the exclusives is what is making that the console special so far. And you know, we have at the top of this on the right side, like all the first party titles, the Ratchet and Clank and God of War, Horizon, Gran Turismo, blah, blah, blah. But it's like below that, though, like looking at these games, Deathloop, Ghostwire, Forspoken, Final Fantasy 16, all of those exclusive. Right. I guess Mm -hmm. Far Cry and Village are not exclusive, but the rest of those are bolstering experiences that you can only get on PlayStation. That is such a crazy thing. And maybe PC and the PC element is what's really interesting to me when you tie it back to the Sony owned and operated titles, because we we have a love for high quality triple A single player games. Right. And maybe five years ago. We started seeing less of those, and there was the fear that single-player games were going to go away. They weren't what's hot. Uh, Battle Royales were first popping off, just Call of Duty multiplayer in general, microtransactions, all that stuff, right? We're changing the face of video games, but Sony put its heels down. We're like, no, we're going to keep making these. We're going to double down on ridiculously high-budget single-player experiences. And for them to now be able to take those experiences after they've already, like, rang the the towel dry of how much money they can make on the playstation consoles in different ways both having uh adopting kind of the the film methodology of we're going to have a theatrical release but then it's going to go to this pay situation where you have to rent it or buy it from a streaming service then it gets to the thing where it's free on netflix or free on a streaming service right there's different levels of revenue being made playstation's doing that where cool you buy the game when it comes out or you can get it later on a playstation plus type service that's a paid subscription thing Mm -hmm. or now the third pillar pc gaming introducing these games to a whole new swath of gamers or returning people you telling me that andy cortez isn't gonna uh boot up uncharted 4 when it comes out on on pc like he's going to so it's a brilliant strategy that really opens up these high budget single player games to a new audience to make even more money to support these games even more like this is just good news for playstation games that these games are going to come to pc and that they're putting such a focus on making sure the PS5 has exclusive titles, console exclusive titles that are extremely high quality single player experiences. Now, Tim, let me ask you this. Have they have they announced a release date or release window at all for Final Fantasy 16? Have they said a year? 
I I could have sworn they said 2021, but then uh, I got you wrong at some point on Games Daily. So I don't think so. I think the trailer just ended. And it, yeah. it was it was that weird Sony conference that was very ambiguous where there'd be trailers that didn't have all the information. Like, remember Demon Souls? They had yeah. the trailer they didn't announce. It was a fucking launch title. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I asked that because, like, you look at the the way that they're positioning uh, stuff in this graphic. Uh, they talk about their lineup, but then the post-launch lineup uh, is where they position a lot of these third-party titles alongside Returnal, Ratchet and & Clank, and all that stuff. You have here Deathloop, which we know is this fall. Far Cry 6, so we, which we know is coming soon. Ghostwire Tokyo, which we know is... The, or, yeah, which is this year, uh, or at least announced for this year. Resident Evil Village, which, which we've already gotten. And then Forspoken, which is announced for... I think January 2022, kind of funny.com slash you wrong if I'm wrong about that. Final Fantasy 16 is the odd man out here, which doesn't have a date, but with them calling it a post uh, launch lineup game, is that coming sooner? Like, is that, do you think it's there for a reason? Uh, I think it's just post launch lineup means from now okay. until forever, right? Like, I mean, if God of War is on that, but for Spoken, I don't think I mean, God of War, me. they're positioning as a 2021 game. Like, all these games are either 2021 yeah. or early, early, early 2022. I mean, are there any early 2020s? I, I don't know about Forspoken. I don't remember having okay. a date on that, but someone in the chat, please let me know if I'm Yeah, asking. please, uh, you're wrong. At least, I think at the very least, they, I think they put 2022 on that, but I could be misremembering. Looking up on Wikipedia right now, it says, uh, or Googling, I should say, it says January 2022, but I also don't know where that's from. It seems so random. Yeah, like, I, I feel like we would have known if it was January. Mm -hmm. That might just be a Google error. It might just be 2022. But yeah, even still, right? Like Final Fantasy 16 is imminent. You imagine, you would think. I mean, it's square. You, you can't imagine imminent is ever <laughs> in their vocabulary. But I, I mean, you know, jokes aside, I, I do think that Final Fantasy 16 is sooner than later. Okay. Okay. Yeah, everybody's saying that it's just 2022 for, for Spoken. And so that might just be a, a weird Google or it might be a, just a placeholder thing. Tim. We still got a lot more to talk about in this episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily, but for now, I want to take a break and tell you about patreon.com slash kind of funny games. You can go there, write in with your questions, write in with your squad ups, but you can also get the show ad free. But guess what? You're hearing this, which means that you didn't. And so let us tell you about our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Purple. As the world becomes increasingly uncomfortable, we're all looking for as much comfort as we can get in. I know that's true, and that's why I love my Purple pillow. Purple makes mattresses, but they make pillows too, and the pillow is my favorite thing because it never gets too warm. You never need to flip it to the cold side of the pillow because both sides are the cold side of the pillow. It's fantastic, the technology. I don't understand it. Purple is comfort reinvented. Only Purple has the grid, a stretchy gel material that's amazingly supportive for your back and legs while cushioning your shoulders, neck, and hips uh, and that's the thing joey she's been living this life on this mattress this beautiful purple mattress feeling so good because of this grid and i've been using the pillow and i love it so much uh, because of how it's designed the grid doesn't trap air air actually circulates and flows through it so you never overheat and i love that uh the grid bounces back as you move and shift unlike memory foam which remembers everything that's why memory foam has craters and divots here exactly what you want it to be uh, right now you can try out purple mattress risk free with free shipping and returns financing is available too. purple really is comfort for an uncomfortable world right now you can get 10 percent off any order of 200 dollars or more go to purple.com slash games 10 and use promo code games 10 that's purple.com slash games 10 promo code games 10 for 10 percent off any order of 200 dollars or more purple.com slash games 10 promo code games 10 terms apply I love purple, really. Story number four, Borderlands 3 is getting cross-play support, but not on PlayStation. This is from Tom Warren at The Verge. Borderlands 3 is set to get cross-play support soon, but not on PlayStation's uh, consoles, or not, not on Sony's PlayStation consoles. Gearbox, the developer of Borderlands 3, has revealed it was it was ready to enable, quote, full crossplay support across all platforms, but that the publisher, 2K Games, required it to be removed for PlayStation consoles. Gearbox CEO Randy Pitchford revealed the details in a Twitter post today, noting, quote, We have been required by the publisher to remove crossplay support for PlayStation consoles to pass certification. It's not immediately clear why 2K, 2K Games has asked Gearbox to remove PlayStation crossplay or whether it's related to Sony's general disdain for crossplay. We reached out to both Gearbox and 2K Games to comment on the situation. The source of the issue could be Sony. 
The recent Epic vs. Apple trial has revealed that Sony has a special agreement with Fortnite developer Epic Games to enable crossplay in the title on PlayStation consoles. Epic Games had to agree to pay additional fees to Sony to enable Fortnite crossplay on PlayStation, and Epic CEO Tim Sweeney confirmed in testimony that Sony is the only platform holder that requires this comp- compensation for crossplay. Tim, does this one surprise you? This I, I I feel like we don't hear about this this often, right? Like games coming out for crossplay, but but nowadays not having crossplay for PlayStation. Yeah, I mean, you know, this was a huge deal two years ago at E3 uh, with the the Fortnite situation. Like I remember it was at the final in in real life E3 that we had, and Greg Miller who was really kind of leading the barrage against uh, Sony and for how ridiculous uh, the decisions were. And yeah, over the last couple of years, we've seen that change, right? And we've seen things as big as call of duty become crossplay across the the board and that's become kind of the expectation for multiplayer games and with that uh the expectation is it leads to letdown when these big devs and big publishers and, and the big dogs of playstation microsoft whatever aren't playing nice and don't have these features that we've come to expect so with this the, there's the real big question like who's making this decision is it playstation or is it 2k is 2k not willing to pay the fee are they like at a principle being like fuck that we're not doing it or is this straight up playstation like being complicated and i think either way even if it was the 2k one playstation's still to blame they still are the ones that are making this too difficult and too complicated and it's a bad look that reflects on them like how much that that reflects their bottom line that's the bigger question do they really give a shit what the gamers think if they're making the money at the end of the day either getting the money from the fee from charging people charging devs uh for this or just making the money because people are buying the game and it doesn't actually Mm -hmm. matter to them here's the thing that i think is very interesting the fact that this news comes out days after we got that report that playstation is the only one that charges people to do crossplay on their platform Mm-hmm. Like I and I I don't see 2K or Take Two as being the company to want to ma- take a stand or make a statement in that way to be like, hey, we're gonna stick it to PlayStation. We're not paying the fee. I wonder. I but I wonder if this is a thing of like, hey, like if they're the only ones charging and people now know this information, then if us with, withholding it isn't going to reflect bad on us. In fact, it'll probably just put more pressure on PlayStation to just let us uh, bypass the fee straight up. Yeah. I yeah. wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. And honestly, I think that would be a power move. Uh, mm-hmm. There's a question here from Nana Ball. Just, uh, he writes in and says, hey, blessing Tim, Borderlands is, is, Borderlands is only not getting cross-play on PlayStation. How much of this do you think is Take-Two slash Gearbox just not wanting to pay the crazy because of a PlayStation fee? Finally, do you, do you expect more third-party publishers to come out with this news now that the information is out in the open? Will more big games, in uh, new and old, not going crossplay possibly cause PlayStation to end their greedy tactic? Because let's be honest, most games won't sell more than seventy percent on PlayStation, especially if they're also released uh, on PC. Thanks, the nanobiologist. And I wanted to focus on that um, that part specifically about more third-party publishers coming out uh, uh, and not doing crossplay now that this news is out there in the open. I wonder if that is a move to to put pressure on PlayStation to get rid of that fee. Because PlayStation, I think, is kind of known to break down after a while. Like, what was the latest thing? The PlayStation store is closing on uh, Vita and PS3, where they're like, hey, our bad. Like, we like we thought this is a fine thing. We hear you. We're going to leave them up. I wonder, I wonder how much pressure it, it takes uh, to make PlayStation go, fuck, we got to stop taking fees. Because this is now reflecting bad on us once again. I mean, here's the thing. Like, the reality of this is... You know, we can look at this and we need to understand that companies don't care about us. They're not look, thinking about people. They're thinking about dollars. And that's always the case. But that works both ways where they're also not trying to fuck us over. They're not trying to make us mad. So them talking about taking down the uh, Vita store and all that stuff, they weren't making that decision as like, and a fuck you guys that care. It's like, no, that's why when people were mad, they're like, oh shit, okay, hey, we should change this. And it's like, that's the thing is they didn't do that to make us happy. They did that because they want more money, right? They Mm -hmm. want to keep their customers happy to make money. The goal is the money, not the happiness, right? So I think when it comes to this, I I feel like they are always going to be just looking at the the dollar signs and trying to figure out how to make that happen. And sometimes that is by getting the will of the people. So I think it's going to be that balance when you look at the different third-party developers. Are they going to what what's more valuable to their bottom line 
banding together with other third party developers and putting out a statement that's like, hey, Sony, we're not fucking paying this. You need to change. Or just kind of being like, eh, we're either going to pay it just to keep our audience happy because it's worth paying this much money for our games to just work cross play, work cross progression, work all this stuff because this is an initiative that we're working on. I can't see Ubisoft putting their foot down. They're one of the bigger ones, right? But it's mm-hmm. like, their money I mean, is being Borderlands, made. Borderlands 3 is a, is a huge game, right? Like Take-Two is totally one of the big is. ones as well. Yep, yeah, yeah. And you know, these, these steps are huge steps, but it needs to be more of a united front in order to actually enact change on Sony's part. Otherwise, Sony could just be like, all right, fine. Other people are paying this. So that's on you. That's the market speaking. That's it all working, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll have to see like how loud the voices would need to be in order for Sony to, to change their, their tune for this. And I think that they would need to be pretty damn loud. And I don't think that just borderlands three is enough for that. Yeah. I mean, this, this is a fascinating one because this has been a story that's been uh, ever ongoing for the last few years, uh, ever since that E3 where uh, Fortnite was announced coming to Switch and Crossplay did open up and just wasn't on PlayStation. They budged that first time. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, I think for us as the audience, we didn't really think about it in terms of like the fee because we didn't we don't we don't know the inside baseball shit when it comes to that. We weren't privy to that. But with that being the case that they budged the first time, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised to see them budge the second time and go. All right, cool. Like enough people, enough devs are 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 now um, uh, uh, fighting back and not doing this that we have to open it up. I wouldn't be surprised to see more more third party uh, uh, developers doing this now that that information is out in the open. But it's also that thing of if it doesn't work, like if PlayStation is like, no, nah, we're just you're gonna have to pay. Then I also wouldn't be surprised to see developers be like, fuck it, all right, we'll pay because it seems like people don't care enough to fight as hard for the games that are doing it. I mean, dude, here's the reality is we just did a news story about how fucking successful the PlayStation is as a console. It's like they have that that premium space to kind of be assholes because they're making the money and they're making other people a lot of money. So they're like got to pay to play if you want to make money on our system and if you want to sell your games you're gonna to have to do this and it's like mm-hmm. that sucks and i i do i would not be surprised if they eventually get rid of this fee or whatever i also very much wouldn't be surprised if they never get rid of it and it stays forever and mm-hmm. people will pay it forever and it will be outliers that don't because they will be chastised eventually if they don't tim Let's talk about Sonic the motherfucking Hedgehog. This is story number five. Uh, the Sonic Central stream happened th- earlier today, uh, celebrating the game's 30th anniversary. I got a recap from our homie Nibel on Twitter, who, of course, tweets during the live events, ke- uh, helps us catch up, keep up with what's going on. And so I'm going to go uh, through all the announcements pretty quickly, or all the major highlights, I should say, pretty quickly. Uh, and so Sonic is making his way into a bunch of different games. He's going into the, I guess, official Olympic Games, the 2020 Olympic Games. Uh, and so you can play as a Sonic uh, mascot in that game, which is pretty fun. Uh, yeah, there's yeah, a Sonic yeah, and Two on. Point Hospital yeah, collaboration. Hold on, hold on, Bless. Don't go, don't go too fast. I need Kevin Coelho's thoughts on what he's looking at right now. <laughs> all right, first of all, this is terrifying. Like, why did they make him full-size human? Like, he's never been full-size human. This is, I don't like this one bit. Also... Did the 2020 Olympics happen? Like, you know what I mean? Like, they didn't. <laughs> they can't just right? cancel the game. <laughs> no, but they can fucking, like, call it something else. You know? But, well, they're still <laughs> calling next year or this year's? Next year's Olympics, the 2020 Olympics. That's bullshit. You got to call it 2021 and put a little asterisk. <laughs> put a little asterisk. Yeah, that's like... It, it was going to be the twenty the twenty twenty one. Yeah, exactly. Um, like the other one's going to be fine. We're going to keep that one where it belongs. Yeah, like we got to be real about what's going on in the world right now. All right, you're going to get two Olympics Olympics in three years. Deal with it. Uh, we also got a Sonic Two Point Hospital collaboration announced. Um, and yeah, you, you you see there if you click in the Sonic characters are just chilling. Um, you heard of Doctor Mario? Now you got Doctor Sonic. And, why? I can't tell those are the Sonic size? characters or humans in Sonic character costumes. They're humans in the costumes. Okay. Remember? Yeah. Oh. Because in the trailer we saw there was a black dude in the Sonic. Outfit. Oh, you're right. You're right. And somebody pointed out that that was me. <laughs> uh, we also got Sonic the uh, Fighters. Uh, that's going to be in the new Judgment game as an arcade game, which is fun. Sonic Colors Ultimate has been announced. Uh, that's coming out September 7th. And of course, Sonic Colors was one of the Wii Sonic games, one of the better regarded uh, Sonic releases of the last decade and a half. Um, so look forward to that. Uh, and then let's see here. Uh, there's a Sonic Colors Rise of the Wisps 
cartoon that's coming this summer. Uh, so look forward to that. Sonic it's Origins. To Craig Smith, and it's voice acted by all the Sonic game characters. Yeah, and it has a really cool art style. It looks really good. Uh, Sonic Origins was announced. That's a Sonic collection, a 2D game collection with games like Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic 2, Sonic 3, Sonic and Knuckles, and Sonic CD. So get hyped about that. Uh, tough, but hopefully it's the right version of Sonic 3. That's all I'm going to say. Amen to that. Some Sonic games are coming to PlayStation now, uh, being Sonic Forces, Sonic Racing, and Sonic Mania. Uh, we're getting some new uh, Sonic merch. Uh, there's partnerships going down with Jack Specific, uh, Dark Horse uh, for the Sonic Encyclopedia. There is um, AP Mechs for like a Sonic coin. Uh, and then King Ice being the big one, which is Sonic Bling, which Kevin, I need you to bring this up because it's fucking golden. It's fucking fantastic. Kevin, are you there? Yes. Go over to oh, the bling. It should be. Though, right? Sometimes we're responding with text. Oh, it's all good. It's all good. I feel, I mean, I feel the struggle. Here we go. <laughs> this is the good stuff right here. This is the good stuff. Of course, you got the Knuckles bling, the Sonic King bling, the Tails Ice. bling, the Shadow bling. And I pitched this to you, Tim, and I wanted to, wanted to definitely make this happen. Me, you, Cool Greg, Raj Picorni, we each get one of these. I'm in, I call, baby. I call Shadow. <laughs> oh, Sonic, <laughs> baby. Let's go. Yeah, Cool Greg will want Shadow, when, will he, won't he? He might I don't want know, cool Knuckles. Greg... Or tails, dude. Can you can you bring in Cool Greg? I've always seen Cool Greg as my tails, but that's just because you know. No, I get that too. I mean, if you if you pitch it to him that way, he'll definitely get tails. Yeah. Is there's no way we can get Cool Greg to come in and choose one real quick? I mean, could we? Uh, yeah. Let me go see. One sec. (laughs) Keep going. (laughs) It's weird how long it took him to respond to that. Like he was just silent for a while. Like he couldn't hear me. No, yeah, no, he was definitely like the, the gears were turning in his head, and I want to know what he was thinking. I want to know if he was like, <laughs> like cool, like I, I don't know. Cool Greg is is uh, too camera shy to to bust out his his Sonic fandom. He doesn't want to talk about that on camera because he's actually deep down a really big fan. Doesn't want to reveal that to the world though because it's an embarrassing fact about him because he's too cool. That's my, that's my uh, assumption. We also got the announcement of a new Sonic project. Um, and, and I mean, you can of course catch our reactions live on youtube.com slash kind of funny games. Me and Tim sat down for a little bit trying to figure out what the fuck this upcoming Sonic game is that's coming out in 2022 because it didn't have a name. All it had was a weird symbol that looked like it said zap, but we couldn't tell for sure. Cool Greg, what's good? What up, man? Greg, uh, cool Greg, did you did you see this <laughs> Sonic Ice that was announced? Looking at it now, pretty what cool. do you think of it, first of all? I don't like the red one at all. Are you not feeling Knuckles? Uh, I like the black one. Mm, okay, well, here's what I want to ask you. is because the thing I was talking to Tim about is me, Tim, you, and Raj Ricorni each get one of these, uh, these, these ice. And the thing is, we have to choose who's going to get what. Tim wants to get Sonic. Yeah. And Tim was talking about how you're kind of the Tails to a Sonic. Which one's Tails? Tails really? is the gold one. <laughs> the super cute blonde kid. Oh, yeah. I don't even... I see the eyes now. I don't know. Yeah. It's too gold for me. I can't even really... Uh, I like the other one that looks like a demon. The knight. Shadow? The, the black one. Fucking called it. Didn't I call I it? Damn it. Damn it. All right. Okay, cool that's, cool. that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Damn it. <laughs> that's cool, Greg. God, always the tails, never the shadow. Always the tails, never the shadow. You hate <laughs> to see it. Tim, uh, how do you feel about... How do you feel overall about the Sonic Central event? You know, I thought I thought it was a really good celebration, like anniversary type thing. I think in terms of a video game showcase event, it it was lacking in terms of uh, quality announcements, uh, video game wise. And I think the tease they gave for the new game was very lacking. Uh, it, it doesn't tell us shit. And, you know, it looks cool. I'm not going to be mad at it. I'm excited to see more about what it ends up being. But uh, especially having gone. Uh, over a year and a half now without real Sonic news and they've kind of been teeing up that they're going to have a lot of news to to give. I was a little let down by by that and I'm a little shocked we didn't get some teaser trailer of some sort of Sonic the Hedgehog 2 movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I'll, none of our get hyped uh, announcements happened, uh, you know, whether it was Sonic Adventure 3, Sonic Mania 2, or uh, a 3D Sonic collection. Um, but what was there I think was expected and fairly adequate for what this is the fact that they teased an upcoming new seemingly bigger sonic game when i say bigger that could of course mean anything that could mean another sonic forces that could mean another Sonic generations you never know mm-hmm. um but it is exciting regardless because we're broken people who will anticipate these games no matter what and just pray for the best 
Um, but the fact that it's coming in 2022 is very exciting. And the fact that it seems like they're doing something uh, a little bit fresh with Sonic, with it being with with us not being able to tell like is this classic Sonic or modern Sonic? Is this a new take on Sonic? I think that points to something that could be exciting, and so I'm looking forward to what that is. Uh, Tim, we got a couple of new stories left. Uh, I want to go through this next one pretty quickly. Uh, story number six, BlizzCon 2021 has been canceled. Uh, it's from Jay Peters at The Verge. BlizzCon, Blizzard's annual fan convention, has been canceled this year due to the COVID-19 pandemic like it was last year. However, the company plans to host a global event set for the, el- for the early part of next year, the company announced on Wednesday. The global event for next year, w- next year will comprise an, uh, an online show like Blizz... BlizzConline. Is that what they called it? BlizzConline? BlizzConline. That took place uh, in February in smaller in-person gatherings. Uh, The company says it will reveal more about that event in the future. So look forward to that if you're a BlizzCon fan. I'm really interested in that even next year they're talking about it's going to be online. Not an in-person event. That's pretty nuts. See, what I assume is that that might do less with the pandemic and more with just the slate of announcements that they have i'm sure quarantine obviously like it's affected so many developers have affected uh uh their slate of games and by next by that time next year i'm sure they'll be ready to talk heavily about overwatch 2 and maybe some of their other projects and maybe that's just a better timing thing for them yeah interesting last news story story number seven dragon quest 12 has been officially announced this is luke riley at ign Square Enix has officially announced Dragon Quest XII, The Flames of Fate, revealing the game at the end of a brief live stream aired today to mark the series' 35th anniversary. It was confirmed that Dragon Quest XII is planned for a simultaneous worldwide launch, but a release date was not discussed. Square Enix also stopped short of confirming any any platforms Dragon Quest XII is headed for. No trailer or teaser was unveiled. Only a logo was showcased. And if that wasn't enough, Tim, we also got an announcement of Dragon Quest III an HD 2D remake announced for consoles. Yeah, so Kev, if you could uh, click into that link and bring up the YouTube trailer, please. So uh, Dragon Quest 12, awesome news, huge for a lot of Dragon Quest fans. I've seen in the, in the chat yesterday and today a lot of uh, hype for that, which is really cool. Jared Petty, I'm sure, is extremely, extremely excited about that. Um, and I'm sure he's also excited about this Dragon Quest 3 remake. I'm extremely excited for this remake because it means that Square is doing what I always hoped they were going to do and use the Octopath Traveler engine to remake old classic SNES or or Square Enix RPGs. This is one step closer, bless, to Final Fantasy VI remake in the HD 2D style, which would be utterly fantastic. We're watching the trailer right now. These are the old uh, versions of the game. We're about to see it transform into this. Oh, my God. Freaking beautiful HD 2D. Good lord. That looks hot. Now, yeah. Tim, you mentioned Final Fantasy VI. Mm-hmm. Do you think they would do that, or do you think they would do Chrono Trigger first? Either way, man. I mean, look, I'm actually pretty shocked that they're, they're doing it at all, because this is one of those, this is too damn good of an idea. They'll never actually commit. It looks like they're committing, and if they're doing Dragon Quest Three, I imagine that it is almost a surefire thing that we're going to be getting more of the the classic square games and yeah chrono trigger would be a fantastic wow. choice this looks uh, but great yeah. <laughs> this looks Final amazing Fantasy six i, I definitely Holy think shit. it's up there too man but yeah man good for i love them. this i love this so much good for them yeah, i love that they're continuing to use this because when at that at that uh project octopath traveler reveal i think like that like that was a hit right like everybody mm-hmm. immediately loved that everybody was like fuck this looks great and this is a great way to, to continue the legacy of of pixel art rpgs like what this style is the fact that yeah now we got the dragon quest 3 3 announcement i think it, it could be the it is the hypest thing ever mm-hmm. uh, uh looking back and seeing what they can do with other Straight things could be in it and i know this doesn't make sense give me an hd 2d parasite Eve, though mm-hmm. you know i know that doesn't make sense in what that game was but you can figure hey, it out let's well, real talk hd 2d remake everything i don't care Honestly, that art style HD is 2D so mario good. 64 you know what I mean? oh my god yes hell yeah Tim, I'm super mm-hmm. excited to see what other HD 2D remakes are announced. But a new announcement is probably just so far away. If I went, it was coming out to Mom Drop Shops today. Where would I look? The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform is listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show host each and every weekday. Out today, we got Warhammer Age of Sigmar Stormground for PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. Crying Sons for Switch. 
Earth Defense Force World Brothers for PS4, Switch, and PC. Super Barberman R Online for PS4, Switch, and PC. Solasta Crown of the Magister for PC. Mech Warrior 5 Mercenaries for Xbox Series X slash S and Xbox One. Eight Dragons for Switch. Connect Colored Dots Fun Water Flow Pipeline Art Puzzle Game for Switch. God damn. <laughs> Horse Club Adventures for Switch, Weaving Tides for Switch, Earth Defense Force World Brothers again for Switch, Sumi Ray for Switch, Crying Sons for Switch, 32 Sex for Switch, and that's sex like S E C S seconds. Uh, mini Car Racing for Switch, Contract for Switch, spelt like a spelt with K's, like your uh, a Mortal Kombat thing. Contract uh, for Switch, Spy Alarm for Switch, Capes Escape Game 2.5th Room for Switch. <laughs> Tim, how the fuck do I pronounce this next one? <laughs> Do you see this? I mean, if I'm being honest, it, okay, <laughs> here's what I want you guys to imagine. It, it's a, a circle, a lot of dashes, another circle. It kind of looks like cat dog, but if instead if it was a cat and a dog, it was just a double-sided dick. That's not a word. It's a symbol. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, circle, dash, 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 circle. Uh, for Switch, <laughs> Fishing Fighters for Switch, The Longest Road on Earth for, P for PC, and then Monster Hunter Rise Update version 3.0 is available today. We gotta have a meeting. We gotta have a meeting about video game names because you mm -hmm. people are taking it too far. <laughs> too far. Way too far. Like, whether it's the double-sided dick or whether it is the, the straight-up connect color dots fun water flow pipeline art puzzle game, y'all need to figure some shit out. Find Jesus. New days for you. Wave Break is coming to Switch and PC June 11th, and then Indie Live Expo 2021, the digital showcase connecting indie game fans worldwide with more than 18 million total views to date. We'll show off more than 300 upcoming indie games from across the world on Saturday, June 5th, 2 a.m. Pacific Daily uh, Pacific Daylight Time. So don't ex don't expect a react to that on a 2 a.m. on 2 a.m. on a Saturday. I'm good. Uh, deal of the day for you though. Among Us is available for free on Epic Game Store. Tim, this was a very good, good episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily. I'm going to hop right in to your wrong. Of course, that's where you write in. Let us know what we got wrong as we got it wrong. So people can write in. Let us know. Let us know uh, or, let, or correct us so we, can, so we can correct it later for those who are watching. God, I can't speak. Correct us. People no. on YouTube and podcast <laughs> services get the right things for the wrong things we said. No squad up? Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Let's see here. Okay. Nana Ball just writes in and says, Bless, you said two Olympics in three years, but we're going to get two Olympics in one year if the Summer Olympics gets delayed again. Winter Olympics are supposed to happen next year. You know what I mean. You know I meant Summer Olympics. I wasn't thinking about the, the Winter Olympics. But there you go. And that's pretty much it. That is pretty much it. Everything else here looks like it is additive. So we killed it, Tim. Oh, yeah. So tomorrow's host. Tomorrow's host for Kind of Funny Games Daily. I'm going to say me and Greg but I'm not positive. There have been many changes on the calendar this week. Like I said, today's been busy. Uh, tomorrow also is pretty crazy. And so uh, I'm going to say tentatively, me and Greg, but that may uh, very well change. If mm -hmm. you're watching this live on Twitch, after this is a live reaction to, to a new Cobra Kai trailer. So get hyped for that. Of course, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily. Uh, each and every weekday live right here on twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. We run you through the nerdy news you need to know about. Uh, we actually don't have uh, have a Patreon post show for those that are subbed at the silver level. Patreon.com is kind of funny games because it is such a crazy day. There's so much going on with all the reactions. And so we hope you understand. Um, and so until next time, I've been blessing. That's been Tim. Game Daily. <laughs>